Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, something new today. We're going to react to the Lex Friedman podcast with the video Torah versus Koran versus Bible. His guest was David Volpe, who is the Max Webb Senior Rabbi of the Sinai Temple. He previously taught at the Jewish Theological Seminary of America in New York, the American Jewish University in Los Angeles, Hunter College and the UCLA. I personally chose this video because I was interested to hear what a Jewish rabbi has to say about the Bible and the Quran of the Abrahamic faiths. Judaism is, so to speak, the oldest and therefore they have the Torah. But what do they believe about the Bible and the Quran? I'm super excited for today's video. With no further ado, let's have a look. Could you maybe talk about the difference between the Torah? Sure the Bible and the Quran. So there's the Hebrew Bible is actually what's called a step canon. That is, there are the five books of the Torah. Then there are books of history and the prophets. Um, so books like Samuel, Kings, Judges, um, and then the prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos, Ezekiel, so on. And then there are what are called the writings. The writings are books like Psalms, Proverbs, Job, the Megillot, which are Esther, Daniel, all of those, all of those books, um, sure. Ecclesiastes. Uh, Many Christians don't realize how much they share with the Jews. So in Hebrew, it's called the Tanakh, Torah, Nevi'im, Ketuvim, the Torah, mm -hmm. the um, prophets, and the writings. And that is the Hebrew Bible. Sometimes that's also called the Torah, just to be confusing, but really the Torah generally refers to the five books. Then there is the New Testament, which the Jews don't recognize as a sacred book. Um, they recognize it as the book of another religion. And I oh, sometimes say to Christians, path. in order for them to really grasp this, Jesus has as much religious significance to Judaism as Muhammad has to Christianity. That is, Jesus, although Jewish, became the founder of another religion, and for Judaism, that's not only in as much as Christians and Jews have had a lot of interactions. But yeah, it's an interesting description, but moreover to the Jews, this implies Jesus and Muhammad. They don't believe in neither. Religiously, Jesus has no significance. Said many beautiful things, said some things I don't like so much. Like what? Uh, like what? Leave your father and mother and follow me. I don't like that as a religious model. Yes. I, um, <laughs> now, Christians so the whole will love say, thing is pretty good. Christians will say that I don't understand that, but they, but that's because... Yeah, but just because you don't like it doesn't make it true. There are many things that I don't like. For example, I would really like to eat kebabs and burgers every single day. I don't like that I have to eat lean meats, that I have to eat rice and chicken in order to get shredded, but I still do it because it is the truth for my anatomy. Because Christians, like Jews, like interpret it. their texts different ways at different right. times. Right. So, um, anyway, uh, the Quran, which I know less well, I have read it, but I know it less well than I know the New Testament, and certainly less well, obviously, than I know the Hebrew Bible, um, is a very is in some ways a parts of it are. I, I, I don't say this word. I say this word because I can't find a better descriptive word, but but Muslims will not accept this, okay, is a takeoff on the Torah in some things. That is, it's the same stories as the Torah, but they're different. Now, so ultimately he makes the claim that Muhammad copied of the Torah, as if we didn't hear this before. Jews will say, and I being a Jew will say this, that that's because Muhammad heard those stories from Jews. There you go. And also heard Midrashim, which are rabbinic interpretations of those stories, and he wrote those down. Muslims will but say, no, right. the Jews got it wrong, and Muhammad came along to correct the record and tell the real story. But they're all telling the story of the same the thing. Hebrew, The Hebrew Bible part, the Abrahamic the part, thing? they all tell what? the story of the same characters, but tell them, they, obviously, Christians accept the Hebrew Bible as sacred scripture. Um, the Muslims retell many of the stories in the Bible. Uh, what is... What is common to all of them is that all of them 
are monotheistic faiths. Now, in Christianity, that's more complicated because of the Trinity, but as Christianity has developed over time, it clearly presents itself and thinks of itself and is a monotheistic faith as well. What's the role of the word? Yeah, the claim is there of being a monotheistic faith, of course. However, if you really dig into it, you will have to come to the conclusion yourself what you believe. Is it truly a monotheistic faith if it concentrates on personages of God or at least perceived personages of God that then can be worshipped as well? You can worship the Father, but you can worship the Son. However, you can worship the Holy Spirit as well, because in the Christian ideology, those things are inseparable. However, this is not much different from Hinduism, for example. In Hinduism, you have the Godhead, which is Brahman. So you do have a monotheistic faith as well, if you want to look at it like that. And from there on, you have the manifestations of God. What is the difference if you call it persons, manifestations, deities, or what not? Ultimately, you're further attributing things onto the essence of of God. And therefore, if it is really a monotheistic religion, I let you decide. Each of these religions in the scriptures, so in terms of, so first of all, oral, the role yeah. of oral traditions, the power of the exactness of the words in the scripture, does it differ or is it really within the communities it differs? It differs because his approach here is a very secular approach, of course. He simply asks if those stories differ a bit. That is not really the question here. We are talking about the core message of religion, or at least that should be the interest, in my opinion. What is the core message of the religion? And did other religions deviate from that core message? The true question becomes, is there a true religion that comes from God? Christianity. That's how I see it. The words are not all the words of Jesus. They're oh. the words of Jesus' disciples. None of the books of the New Testament were written by people who met Jesus in person. So sure. they're different. And therefore, the and also, we don't even know sometimes the original language of some of the things in the New Testament. Correct. It's Aramaic, in, but the New Testament is in Greek. In the Bible, and I understand in the Quran, but I'll speak for the Hebrew Bible. The idea is that that's Lashon HaKodesh, that's sacred language, and Hebrew is in its, that's the language, according to the tradition, that God actually spoke to Moses, and therefore the exact words are infinitely interpretable and meaningful. And But the words were spoken, but written by Moses, and the same with Muhammad, right. but from memory. Or no, there is are there, different. It, there are different theories. I won't speak for Muhammad, you should... Ask. I don't want to get. I don't want to get that wrong. I don't want to get another religious yeah. tradition wrong. In Judaism, the words are written by Moses at God's dictation. Basically, that's the traditional view. There are other views that I, I'm yeah. happy to. The Quranic view is that the Quran is the uncreated word of God, the eternal word of God. Go into if you want to, but basically that's the traditional view. So it's pretty close. Right. What makes it different? What makes Judaism and Christianity different is Christianity has an ideal life. Judaism doesn't have an ideal life. Judaism has an ideal book. So the holidays of Christianity are events in the life of God, God's mm -hmm. birth, God's death and resurrection. In Judaism, the holidays are all events in the life of the people, like the liberation from slavery, mm -hmm. or in the people's relationship to God, like Yom Kippur, which is a day of atonement. But there are no holidays in Judaism that are events in the life of God, because in Judaism, God doesn't have a biography. God is eternal, and God never came to earth. All right, guys, this is already it for today's short clip. I expected a little bit more of an in-depth explanation. However, of course, he's a rabbi, and therefore he concentrated more on the Jewish worldview and respectfully said as well that he doesn't want to mischaracterize Islam, for example. He knew quite a bit about Christianity, on the other hand. However, into Islam, he hasn't looked himself. That being said, his perspective is nothing new here. We heard it all before that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon upon him copied the books, even though he was illiterate, or moreover that he was possessed, he didn't know what he was talking about. All of those allegations we heard a billion times before, and in most instances it comes from people that haven't done their own research. Here you have him sitting there, not having researched the Quran, but saying, hmm, he probably copied it. So this is of course a beautiful display of absolute ignorance and arrogance yet again. Alright guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up 
if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon for example all the links are in the description box below thank you so much for your ongoing support guys really from the bottom of my heart as always may god bless you all much love and peace Thank you.